Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thanks very much for coming to another one of our uh, webinars. Um, as you know, we're showcasing uh, the Acure campaign today, and uh, I'll be doing an introduction into them in just a second. But before that, I just want to say a couple of words. Um, as investors on the Spark platform, you might be interested to know that we've recently closed uh, a campaign for Halo SOS. Uh, this saw investors achieve a 366% return on their initial investment in, in the company uh, from a couple of years ago. I can repeat that again, 366%. So they raised uh, at a valuation, and now that valuation is almost four times that, uh, that, that value uh, when you include the EIS uh, amount. This was also this followed hot on the heels of another company that we raised money for, a company called Willola, who who recently also closed closed around uh, with a venture capitalist. Uh, this saw Spark investors achieve a six hundred and fifty percent return on their investment. Again, six hundred and fifty. So, as you can see, that the, these are, are these two companies, along with most of the other businesses that we have on our platform, uh, are scaling rapidly and 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 we want to give you, our investors, a big return on 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 your investment. I mentioned these just to highlight uh, how selective we are in making uh, uh, investment opportunities available to the investors on the Spark site. We 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 allow probably what, about one in ten businesses up onto the onto the business onto the onto the platform, uh, which emphasises the quality of the investment opportunities that we make available to you. Um, so uh, the company that we'll be hearing from for, uh, shortly also fits into this, of course. Um, and in addition to uh, Cure who are on the site, we have a number of companies who are in the wings and will shortly be going live. Uh, two of them will probably be going live before Christmas. Uh, and so look out to those, uh, look out for those in the coming days. And we have a full pipeline for uh, for the early early part of next year as well. So very exciting times for Spark and hopefully you as investors into the Spark businesses as well. Don't forget also, unlike uh, other investment vehicles, investing in companies through Spark uh, is with uh, zero commission um, when you invest. Uh, so investors pay um, no commission on, on the investments that you make. Um, so that's, uh, that's always a good element to, uh, to what we offer you as well. As always, we're very keen to arrange one-to-one -one meetings with the investors. Uh, and the promoters. So, if anyone if anyone wants to actually uh, ask some questions directly to the promoters, we are very happy to arrange that and uh, and facilitate that meeting. After Aaron's presentation, we'll open the floor to uh, questions from investors. So, please raise your questions in the Q and A. Please don't do it in the chat. We can't see those uh, uh, very easily. And so, if you do it in the Q and A, we've got traceability of those, and we can e easily ask those. So, please, uh, please, them do them there. Um, we've already had a number of questions submitted and we'll try to get to them all, but uh, if we don't, I'll get Aaron to uh, write those uh, out formally and we'll put them up onto the campaign page uh, very shortly afterwards. So let's get started. So Aaron, please, if you turn your uh, camera on. Um, Aaron uh, is uh, a consultant uh, in intensive care medicine and, sur and surgery at St Vincent's University Hospital with Australian and European qualifications in surgery, aeromedicine, tropical medicine, and international health. And as such, has first-hand knowledge of the challenges that face clinical trials around the world. The problem, of course, that Acure is trying to overcome. So as you may be aware, this is the second campaign that we have done for, for Acure with us on the Spark platform, uh, which the first one was 20 months ago. And this will be the last time uh, that private investors will be able to get a slice of Acure before they raise uh, their Series A within the next six months of uh, Q uh, of uh, 2023. So, Oren, you're very welcome. Chris, thanks very much. Um, and certainly, I, I'd certainly echo what you're saying about the due diligence. We, we, we spent a lot of time pitching and some some pretty in-depth due diligence on, on getting on the Spark platform. So that, that wasn't an easy task, but uh, absolutely, I, absolutely. I'm said I'm delighted to be here. Absolutely. So if you'd like to share your screen um, and sure. you can get started with your presentation, and uh, I'll see you at the end of that for your Q&A. Great. So look, um, I'll certainly just try and share the screen, go through um, go through the, the deck and maybe actually go through the, the, the platform live as well. I'm conscious that there's a range of people here from both existing investors and potentially new investors as well. Um, so without digging too much uh, into the fundamentals, I thought it's also good to give that, that introductory and high level view of where we've come from, what we're doing and where we're going. So ultimately, the vision here has always been about you know, creating 
medical digital twins for clinical trials and digital twins i'll talk about more but it's a concept that comes from engineering but we're really bringing to the life sciences it, it's that virtual representation in a digital sphere of your your clinical health and that comes from your physiological data in terms of wearables your clinical data in terms of who you are what conditions you have what what drugs you're taking right down to then the precision level which is your genomics your dna uh, once you confuse these three aspects into a single entity and digitize them i.e., a digital twin you can then share this and you share this for clinical trials for this this what we call genomic plus data is incredibly valuable for those who are tr creating the next generation of targeted therapeutics or or, or pharma uh, prescription medicine, call it what you will. Um, ultimately, you know, taking back to what's what's the what's the the, the, the vision here? It, it's to help cure disease, the symptoms and the actual underlying things, what one gene at a time. Because we are now in the era of of what's called precision medicine, and precision medicine refers to personalized healthcare that's driven by insights at a individual uh, and hence genomic level. So that's precision data. In the last 20 years, we've been in the era of in the information age of medicine. We're now rapidly uh, transforming into the era of precision medicine. Uh, and what Acura is doing is building the digital infrastructure to enable that to happen. So we're not trying to actually capture data. We're hosting the infrastructure and creating that to allow others create that data. We host it and we enable sharing of that data. So it's digitizing the DNA. Silicon, siliconizing carbon life form. Uh, and what we do then is we put this as a, and hold it as, a, as, a, as what's called a, a digital asset uh, in a term known as a soul bound asset. And soul bound means that it's not something you can sell, it's always yours. You can share it and by, by sharing it, you can be rewarded for doing the same. Those rewards might come in the, in, the, in, in the form of access to clinical trials, access to drugs that would be unavailable in the market otherwise, or indeed potentially monetization of that particularly in the US market, where I can actually effectively loan my data, share my data, and be rewarded for doing the same. And this is all powered by a suite um, of converging enabling technologies that we've harnessed, ranging from blockchain technologies for permissioned access, right down to AI in the form of natural language processing to rapidly match users and their clinical uh, profiles to these clinical trials. Um, where does it come from? Web 2, that's the current internet as we know it. And this is all about users exploiting data to third parties. So we all know that Cambridge Analytica, um, the billion dollar companies that are Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, how they have used individuals' data to monetize them. Um, and you know, that's the same for health data. That's People have been doing this for the last 20, 30 years. Web 3 is the technologies we're using in the form of blockchain. And what that allows people is to do is, is own their data themselves. So, so we host that again, but we don't control people's data. We empower them to create their assets and share those assets on a web 3.0 interface. So I think that's a crucial element of what we're doing that, that marks us out very differently from others in this space. There's lots we're looking at data exchanges, medical data exchanges, medical, medical creation of medical assets, but often these are kept in silos. And this is true for researchers as well. Researchers tend to hold these, 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 these uh, data so that they can create papers that give themselves um, credibility or you know, status. And we're saying, no, that shouldn't be the case. Why would you limit it to one researcher or one group of researchers when every researcher there can actually should be able to access this? Why limit it to one drug company when all drug companies should have this data? So instead of one group of brilliant minds, we should have hundreds of groups of brilliant minds finding these cures leveraging this genomic plus data. And, and that's our whole philosophy here, the democratization of data. So how are we doing this? It's, it's the convergence to a singularity. You may be familiar that our, 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 our company name is Singularity Alpha. We trade under the term Acura Genomics. It's AI because you need auto, uh, artificial intelligence to be able to scale things to the population level that we're seeking to do that. So individuals, sure, you can take um, match someone to a, to a trial on your own. You can find your DNA on its own. To do that for millions of people at a population level, you need AI to scale and for accuracy. Blockchain is, is key, as I said, from a web 3.0 perspective. What it allows is patient center control. It means that our company does not own or control that data. A cure builds the infrastructure for patients to, to leverage their own data for their own, for their uh, under their control and reward. The genomics is, is all about leveraging and moving into the era of precision medicine. Um, and that data really becomes invaluable 
so this next generation of 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 bio biotherapeutics and life sciences industry that we'll, we'll talk about soon and finally the we've, we've borrowed ideas here from fintech exchange in the form of sharing of that data. There's, there's lots of exchanges out there, both in the fintech world, both in the, in the medical world, but we're looking at really using our technologies to allow that fast matching and sharing of data using that, that data exchange. And I mentioned already the genomics components, then the wearables, which is your physiology, your heart rate, sleep data, et cetera, and then the clinical data. And that can be retrospective clinical data from patient records, or can it be prospective using some of our, our, our med bots, which effectively allow you to have an AI enhanced conversation, which captures that clinical data. Um, we convert this into a digital twin, otherwise known as a cryptosome, and then we host that onto an exchange whereby we can represent and broker cohorts of these patients, such as um, heart disease, um, it could be patient with diabetes, um, Ehlers Danlos, multiple sclerosis, whatever those might be. But by bringing those into collective cohorts, that's when the power is really, really becomes unlocked. And then this marketplace is essentially where you can access the data, you can exchange that for, for those who actually are health owners to those who are health buyers. Um, and that then tends to be researchers, big pharma, and, and, and a new whole new generation of, of really exciting companies um, using computational analytics, i.e. really next generation enhanced data, which is in silico drug development. Um, and that's using um, effectively digital twins to create new targets for drug therapeutics. So it is the fact that data is gold uh, and we're creating that, that, that digital asset and we represent that in the form of credit card um, for, for users who create that avatar. Um, and equally it's something that we're offering to all investors at a certain level to come in and actually have, have that, that digital avatar, that, that digital twin created for them effectively for free. Um, but when you collect that data, I was mentioning, it becomes, it becomes priceless. Uh, and certainly priceless to those who are in the, in the, in the business, the, the multi-billion dollar business of creating new drugs and therapeutics. Um, this is a pretty busy slide. You can, you can look through this, but effectively it's the process. It's all about getting the sequencing, you, doing that at home. So we, we take the lab into the home. So home testing, it, 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 in many ways, it's genomic home testing for precision. And um, that, that is like, you know, let's get checked, except for genomics, and then enhancing that with clinical data and putting that onto a shareable format controlled by patients. And um, when you impose neural networks, another form of AI to these assets, you can start seeing some really not just matched cohorts, but patterns in the, the terabytes of data that you're collecting. Uh, and that's one of the really exciting things here in terms of unlocking insights that don't currently exist. If you think about the, the terabytes of data consisting in each uh, cohort or collection of individuals with DNA and using machine learning techniques, you can start seeing patterns in that CGAT. In other words, those, those base pairs in your genes that, that can reveal targets for new therapeutics. And that's ultimately what, the, what this is all about, trying to find targets for new therapeutics that we don't even know exist that whole era of precision medicine and DNA is so nascent, it's so young, and we haven't been able to apply the powerful tools of AI to that yet, because we haven't got the population level data yet, uh, fused with the clinical data yet. All of these things are happening, and we're creating the infrastructure to enable that. So again, I talked about the medical digital twins, that, that asset, that concept, concept of that digital twin. And I also mentioned the in silico drug companies and we're in talks with a number of them, and, and it, 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 I'm kind of proud to say some of these are in Ireland. Some of these cutting edge precision therapeutic companies are in Ireland. Unlike us, we're taking a hospital into the home. They're taking the lab into the hospital and creating these almost drugs at the bedside. But that all relies on genomics plus data, and that's why we're making some of these some of these partnerships already. And more on that hopefully very shortly. Um, so the route to market, we really, it's a two-sided business model because ultimately it's about data providers and hosting those. Where did that data come from? Multiple verticals from healthcare providers, patients themselves, which we feel is still the single most important, and um, patient groups, and um, biobanks, and um, community pharmacies, in silica drug companies. There's a whole host of, 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 of verticals and, and channels which can feed into this. Equally, the data consumers, you know, pharma, big pharma, research organizations, clinical research organizations, CROs, precision drug companies. You know, there's, there's an existing, um, I suppose, uh, 20 or 30 years of, of drug industry who've accelerated into the precision 
phase of drug development, but there's now also a whole new uh, industry being developed out of just computational analytics that the whole in silico models of drug development, harnessing DNA and harnessing AI. They're the people we're talking with, they're the people we're partnering with. Um, so it's really about, in the first instance, hosting and creating that digital asset. So enabling that Web 3.0 hosted digital asset, you know, the digital medical twin, and then layering that into an exchange service where we can match with those consumers of that data, and then overlaying that with services. And that, that's where we, we have another unique product, which is the clinical trial matching service, the AI-based one again. And, and it's not just the fact that we've now created one of the world's first AI hosting you know, powered clinical trial um, matching services. But what I'm gonna show you very shortly is an insight into the world's first precision clinical trial matching service. So that's enhancing and integrating variants of someone's genome into clinical trials and clinical trial, trial matching. And the reason that's so important before I go on to that is that if, if when we start, started out with this company almost two and a half years ago now, the number of, of trials out of the 280,000 clinical trials looking for re recruiting patients, there was about two to 3% who actually were looking at genomic-based criteria in terms of eligibility and ineligibility. That's already gone to, 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 to almost 10%. And we envisage this, certainly in the next three to five years, almost 100% of clinical trials will be based on DNA markers. So we're, we're about to enter this phase um, of precision medicine uh, and, we're building, and we're, we're, we're building the road for that. So that's, a, that's a, a really exciting insight, if you will, into where precision medicine is going. Um, and our clinical trial finder embracing and integrating genomics into that is, is we feel not just a world first, but an incredible exciting piece of IP. Um, I talked about in silica drugs, I talked about precision medicine, and also then just genomic sequencing um, and where that can go. I mean, there's a whole, I won't get talked dug into the different sequences, but suffice to say there's the next generation or fourth generation sequencing is still in that process of creating that software and, and the insights that that will bring to um, what's called epigenetics or what happens to your, to your DNA when it's exposed to the environment and you effectively start you know, getting diseases based not on your, your genome, but your genome fused to the, your, your lifestyle. Um, that's epigenetics. Very brief, our team itself, um, you know, some, of the, 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 some, some really deep, people, deep domain expertise right across a number of, of, of domains from technology to blockchain to clinical medicine, clinical trials, um, genomics itself, bioinformatics, and that's just some of the key team. But we, we, we do have a, a team currently of 12 people, um, in, including another 10 engineers who are contracted out um, that, that, that covers this whole deep domain expertise. And bringing that together alone is a major barrier to entry into what we're doing into our competitive landscape. There's no one who ha that has this constellation of talents and equally no one who's doing this convergence of clinical trial matching, precision clinical trial matching, digital twin creation, medical data exchange, AI-based uh, informatics. Um, you know, there's lots of companies who are doing one of these things, but converging those together into a single entity and, and, and offering is something that's got our partners really excited in, in pharma, CRO, and elsewhere. A, a quick brief mention on some of our existing partners that we're partnering with on, on the DTIF um, uh, project. We This is a project that we uh, were together with Microsoft as a technology partner, and then the Royal College of Surgeons in the form of Future Neuro, um, and their focus on neurological diseases is something that is very close to our heart as well, be that um, epilepsy, be that Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, motor neuron disease. These are all you know, diseases that really need the power of scale and AI and genomics to start unlocking the secrets to what is causing these, and, 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 and in turn then cures for same. So we have some you know, really big blue chip names that we're very proud to be part of, and, and, and with that comes the access to um, clinical trials, which we'll be doing in February and March of 2023. The ethics approval um, for one, with St. James's Hospital has already been granted. Um, Beaumont is pending with their clinical trials, so we some the reason that that won't be granted as well. So that's a really exciting big milestone for us as well. The partnership with Microsoft goes back many years, right back to when some of these patents um, and some of this trial matching software was done when I was in Australia. Um, and that's both as a high potential startup, but also in the R&D phase um, with Microsoft. And we're also working with some of their, uh, their, their, their key uh, divisions in healthcare 
that's not based in Ireland elsewhere as well. So, so we're proud to be one of those entry and early level companies working to, to really, I suppose, finesse some of the technology that's used in clinical trial matching. Um, and that's the precision clinical trial matching I talked about. I might come on to that very, very shortly. Um, but ultimately, it, it, it's, it's Singularity Alpha um, is this ecosystem that we're building out in the next generation of clinical trials in that, that, that era of precision clinical medicine, precision medicine. It's the home genomic tests. It's the in silico digital twin assets. It's that medical data exchange. It's bests in that blockchain consortium with, with that, that, that 6 million euro with the commercial rights for Singularity Alpha to commercialize um, with the technology providers of, 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 of Microsoft. And again, the, the research entity and, 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 and the clinical expertise embodied by um, Future Neuro and RCSI. Um, so that's that's secure. I, I might go very briefly, if you'll bear with me, onto the website and give you a, a feel for where this is at, because we've gone beyond the idea. We spent the last 18 months you know, building the tech stack, building these partnerships, um, and really going into um, you know, building out that website. And that inflection point is very exciting now because what we're doing now, of course, is is actually commercializing that. So this is the home screen. Hopefully, many of you will have signed on to this already. Um, there's here I can actually see that you know we are having a whole host of clinical trials, this is a live data map that we've integrated right throughout the clinical trials throughout the US. We're selling those products, you know, for patients. Um, a, a list of the digital twins, the pharmacogenomics kits, um, that, that medical ISO grade labs that we are we we, we work with. Um, and how that works, order being tracked, the process being secure, the DNA home testing, um, science and metal grade labs, results that are owned and hosted by the patient and then fused with that as well. Um, and then in, in terms of that, it's partnering with doctors, with hospitals, um, right down to the, the, the product itself. Um, we can look at our dashboard and where you can fuse and, and find that the clinical trials, I can connect up here, see where these clinical trials are for me. And I look at my profile, see what those trial suggestions are, and bring it right back and mint that onto that blockchain so I have that asset again. Um, and, no, sorry, <laughs> press the wrong button. So, um, and in terms of those, 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 those clinical trials, um, just a quick insight into, um, into what we're trying to do with the, the clinical trials themselves. So the, the piece here you'll see, um, we can go through this bot, and the, the great thing about the bot that, that, that we're, we're kind of focusing on with a number of partners is the fact that we just integrate this, and this is based on the experience we had building the COVID med bot about two years ago when we were the first, world's first uh, med bot created that. We had over 150,000 downloads of that med bot, but we distributed free to 15 pharmacy chains throughout Ireland, um, and, and those connections we have, networks we have with those companies still exist, and we're now talking with many of these major chains about integrating this MedBot trial finder onto their site as well, because if you think about it, people go to pharmacies because they need prescription medications and medications, they go there because they have a medical condition. Uh, and this will help them find clinical trials related to that. So you can see here, we go through that, that piece whereby it's beginning to ask questions based, like using this eye based on what we're doing, chemotherapy for breast cancer, stage three, um, I can look at this and all the time I'm whittling down those thousands of trials onto something that I can actually view. And you can see here that I can actually look at those clinical trial profiles. I can save these trials um, and I can like, do this right now. This is just your, your first generation. This is something that companies have raised you know, countless millions on just to build. We've built it, it's live already. There's still companies out there that are trying to say that this is new technology. We're saying we've already done this. Um, but what we're doing is the next thing. We're now doing it with variants, genomic variants. So when you actually do this, you can actually upload existing tests. And you know, 23andMe is, a, is, a, is an example, Ancestry.com. 12 million people created a 23andMe profile. We can now offer them the ability to upload that file or create your own file and actually access genomic-based clinical trial matching. Um, but again, you can go back to the 23andMe. You've already got this. One of the 12 million people have already done this. You can upload that. And now look through almost 600,000 genomic variants which we filed through looking for those eligibility criteria. Take a few moments and you'll see here there's two clinical trial matches that we have based on the variants that are in your specific genome. So this is trials individualized 
personalized for you. Uh, and we can see, capture that, see where it is. And then we can effectively, patients can select that and let us know, and we can broker that on their behalf and cohorts like them. So applying for that. And then with that, then there's a whole host of other related pieces that people might be interested in, particularly pharmacogenomics where we're focusing, because again, pharmacogenomics variants gives you insights into how you deal with medication, right down to potentially life-threatening interactions with chemotherapy. These are all things, or indeed something more banal, blood thinners. How much are you taking? Are you taking too much? Is it the right drug? These are all insights we can provide via community pharmacies. So that's just a quick insight into the precision clinical trial matcher and how that actually also integrates with distribution at channels um, at a direct consumer level, but also a B2B to C. Um, so look, I, I might stop there. Um, uh, hopefully we've gone through a lot there. There's, there's a lot in both the deck, the site, and indeed that, 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 that hopefully that, that, that preview into the clinical precision, clinical trial matching, the world's first. Um, so uh, I think Chris, I'm, I'm happy to take questions if, 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 if that makes sense at this stage. Very good. Yeah, no, we can, uh, we, well, let's get started on those. There's plenty that are coming through already. So, um, so yeah, uh, start off with this one. Um, can you please summarize what you've achieved since your last funding exercise, please? So yeah, well, that's a good question. Any, um, I suppose it's always great to be back in front of, you know, our, our first supporters uh, in many ways, and hopefully some new ones. Um, I think we've had a crazy year and a half, um, but a very exciting one at the same time. Um, we've, you know, working on the best was, was, is a key part of what we've spent our time on. That's the best platform to, 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 to create these, you know, this next generation of clinical trial matching. And I think having that ethics approval uh, and then pending for the second hospital, uh, two of Ireland's largest hospitals with a key um, disease in the form of epilepsy, um, that impact that we can have to validate that model and a process is incredibly exciting. And, and anyone who's involved in clinical trials and certainly genomic clinical trials and hospital-based clinical trials will know that that's not an easy task. So that's a, a major piece, I think. I think building the site and the platform um, and that whole tech stack that powers that is, is incredibly uh, important. Um, I, I think equally the Find a Cure movement that we just launched there a few weeks ago um, to, to try and create... Um, multiple digital twins for people with diseases to, to, to launch as a global movement. And we already have now a discussion with a number of, of major, major global farmers who want to come on board with this. That, that's been a, a really exciting um, initiative. I mean, the trial bot itself, the precision trial bot, that, that again is just another key piece of IP. There's, there's, there's genuinely that whole ecosystem we're building in terms of the assets, the infrastructure, the assets that are deployed onto the exchange which matches those assets, and then the actual layering of services of which clinical trial matching is a key one it, it, it is that genuine ecosystem that we're building out and that's that that's that that takes time but the value that unlocks uh, in the sh in the medium to longer term it, it can't be understated i think um you know we're talking with oxford nanopore that's that next generation sequencing technology um it's the um it, it, it's the the partnerships we've established with the help of EI Enterprise Ireland as, as, a, as one of their uh, HPSUs. Um, they're obviously a key investor and supporter of us. So even only last month, I was in, in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, looking at launching an, our, our US-based um, site there. And that's really what we're now focused on, commercializing and pushing to the US because as, as existing investors are probably aware, I've heard me say before, Ireland is a great testing ground. It's a great connection for not just talent in terms of tech, in terms of developers, but also for big pharma uh, and indeed Irish-based precision therapeutics companies. To do this at a scale and the opportunity that is there in the, you know, in the trillion dollar health industry in the States, where you can advertise, we can engage with patients, where they need you to help monetize their data on their behalf because the cost of healthcare is so high, that's where we're going and that's where that real opportunity is so i think that's the partnerships we've been building this doesn't happen overnight this is you know six to 12 months of relationship building um and that's the same of of, of, of vcs but maybe i can talk about that later Thank you. perfect um that leads us right into the next question here about the us so what results are you expecting with the market entry into the us or what, what what's your anticipation well i think the first thing is um um well, I suppose location. So, so, so deciding on that is, and that's what we're probably thinking, you know, Cambridge with, with that biomed tech, it's the capital of biomed tech, East Coast, near to Ireland. So that seems to make sense. And, and having a foot on the ground gives you credibility there and gives you access to those markets and, and the players. 
in terms of you know, why we're going there, what we're hoping to achieve, that, 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 that is really the partnerships we're hoping to expand on. So, so that's not just in the VC world and that Series A, which we're you know, kind of really focused and very, very focused on, but it's the metrics we need to get to the Series A. And that's the partnerships and that's the distribution, the creation of the digital twin assets. So I already alluded to you know, community pharmacies and going that B2B to B to C model, but also big pharma. Um, and particularly that next generation where we really play a key role is genomics plus data. Um, to the, the, the data, and that's this rich data that in silico drug development companies require, and not just that, that new generation of drug development companies, but the existing behemoths like the Pfizer's, the GSK's, the, 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 the Roche. They're also building out this whole next generation of cancer drugs for precision medicine, immunotherapy drugs, that all relies on genomics plus data. And that's in the States, and that's Cambridge particularly. Um, I think hospitals is the other big one. There's a lot of connections both I have in, in Cambridge and New York and also EI have um, with these networks of hospitals. So if you think about it, individual patients at one, we can you know, match standard trials, but part of the tech stack we're putting out is an enterprise um, solution, which, which fits into the EMRs that exist in every single American hospital, um, which gives you that data, not just one patient's data, but hundreds of thousands and millions of patients, which we can actually filter at scale to give insights at a departmental hospital and network hospital level to which patients can be matched to which trials. And that transforms the, the silo data and the latent power of this data that currently these hospitals don't know how to monetize. This is one way of monetizing that. So hospitals are the other, and the final piece is probably um, health insurers. Um, you know, people want access to precision medicine. They want to know um, what's in store. They want insights. They want control over what might be in store, so they can act action now and take action for that. And, and that's part of a, a health plan, particularly in the states, but even so in Ireland. But again, there's three insurance companies in Ireland. You know, covering four and a half million people. There's 400 million people in the states and you know and, and countless insurance companies who can leverage what we're doing so i think that's the goal it's partnerships it's it's scale and it's access to capital to make that happen Brilliant. good um question here when would the acure platform be complete well i think that's never but uh, nevertheless uh, but uh, who would you uh, see as your competitors as well Look, well, look, speaking of Cambridge, there's a company called Nebula Genomics. Um, they're a blockchain-based company. Um, they, they host DNA um, on their blockchain, but the fact that they do that means it's not GDPR compatible. So that's a big fail as far as we're concerned. We use a hybrid model using blockchain for permissioned access, but we use Microsoft to store the data, which allows people the right to be forgotten, to remove that data because people who may be familiar with blockchain technology, the whole beauty about blockchain is that you can't alter it. It is immutable, it is a clear audit trail, which is why it's brilliant for controlling access. You can see who's accessed your data, when, where, for how long, et cetera. But the data itself, i.e. your DNA, your clinical data, that needs to be hosted on a cloud. And hence Microsoft is key, such a key partner for us. Um, and that's what, for example, Nebula don't do. Equally, they don't do clinical trial matching. They don't do digital twin creation. So, so they're one. Um, the, there's others then who can create digital twins, but they're more at that engineering level, as I said, and they actually don't integrate clinical data to that. There's um, a few more blockchain-based companies, but they're more about creating um, assets out of, out of data, out of EMR data, not using live dynamic data in the form of DNA, wearables, and certainly not in the clinical trial space. So I think there's lots of companies who are doing similar things. There's, there's a company called Antidote who try and do clinical trial matching, but it's, a, it's effectively a, a, a more, it's a more, it's a, it's a prettier interface uh, to allow you find a clinical trial, but there's no AI, there's no genomics, there's no precision. So it's already legacy technology. Um, so yeah, look, I could go on. There's, there's, there's probably 20 or 30 in different spheres, but there's no one individual company that's doing what we're doing now. Um, could you just uh, talk, there's a few questions on about, um, just asking about revenue. Uh, can you talk more on the business model and the revenue um, streams or maybe any potential regulatory barriers to any of those revenue streams? Look, I mean, we, we see in a, at a high level, there's probably three or four different revenue streams because it is that ecosystem. There's the actual asset creation itself, and that's more commodity. So we're not that focused on that, but certainly that revenue, and we've already, you know, almost 150 digital twins that have been sold on the site already. So that's, you know, we're now post revenue, we're commercializing a product and that's a really exciting stage to be at for the company. Um, 
there's then the actual where, where, where things get a bit more interesting that there's the license fee for big pharma um we're actually you know as I, as I mentioned before we're in commercial discussions with a number of big CROs in terms of accessing licenses to this um to be able to avail of that data uh, and again we don't control that data we just allow them potential access and we broker that with patients to then say yeah well I'm happy for you to share this for this in return so so that's a key piece I mean the the, the clinical trials market you're calling, talking about eight to ten thousand euro per patient per person recruited to a trial that's the level of, of value that an individual patient has to a, a clinical trial or a CRO um, so we would basically you know, capture some of that value not just for the platform but for the patient as well um, so, that, so that's a key piece that analytics that data brokerage that asset creation and then that exchange that that medical uh, data exchange where you, where you basically exchange find a buyer of data for the for the seller of the data in the form of that digital twin asset um, and that creates you know new business models to, to allow individuals monetize their health data uh, but also access that next level of personalized um, products and personalized medical services. Um, and probably it's worthwhile to touch a bit more on that data exchange because Nokia, you'd be familiar with them, and indeed AWS, Amazon, biggest company in the world, they already have these data exchanges whereby you can effectively share and find buyers and sellers of data. So we're just effectively building into that. We're not trying to recreate that. We're, we're integrating with that. Uh, some of our blockchain partners allow us to do that as well. So I think it's that license, it's that trial matching, it's the asset creation itself um, and the regulatory piece around that. And um, certainly you know, we're, we're always working. And this is you know, something we really acknowledge the help we've got from BEST's project and RCSI who are experts in this sphere in terms of guiding us to be that GDPR compliant, that consent. And one of the key things we're building and have built already is using blockchain again, there's this concept of, of, of dynamic smart contracts because the dynamic means it's always updated, always on. Smart contracts means it's conditional based on certain um, assets or certain things in the data exchange that the patient then says, yeah, I'm happy for my data to be released here for this amount of time to this person if it's looking at MS disease, say. So those smart contracts bring the next level of GDPR. Um, and that's, we're kind of building for the future. Uh, I think the expertise we have on that, both internally and, and with our partners, will be key to setting us again aside from 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 this because it's it's a really technical space and quite a challenging space as anyone in, in, in digital health life sciences or gdpr a hated word <laughs> you know um yeah i think that's where we're at with that is the success of a cure dependent on how many people submit genomic samples and if so what are the plans to attract these samples yeah no look a good question so that so we see that as a commodity i think for us in the first instance no is the short Quite short answer and um, what we're doing at the moment is those samples they're, they're simply assets but but our real ip is is the infrastructure that hosts those assets so if you take back to a cro or so they have millions of data points and millions of of data exchanges they just haven't transformed them into a, into a live dynamic digital twin but it's not that hard to do that in due course where our ip comes in is hosting that and this is true of national infrastructure for genomics like in the uk it's to look at the million genome project eu-wide projects all of these are are looking at and indeed ireland as well national projects to try to create this genome infrastructure we we enhance that we augment that and we support that because our dynamic based consent our smart contracts our permission to access to that data brings that whole accelerates the whole process so so we that we see it as a total synergy with that. So it's an infrastructure play. It's, it's, it's much more important than creating digital twins. It's hosting and sharing the digital infrastructure for those twins. But at the same time, it is important in the first instance to create those assets. And that's what we're doing with various different partners that I alluded to beforehand, be it health, community pharmacies, patient charities, patients themselves, um, hospitals. So, so it's just a way of accelerating that, that, that path. Excellent. Um, just a, a question here on the exit. So what's the likely exit time frame for an investor? Or... Look, most startups are probably, you know, you'll, you'll hear the band of the term around five years. I, I think in a, a space as exciting and fast moving as this, I'm more like, say, three years. I mean, uh, you know, again, I was at this quite interesting conference in Malta, a MedTech conference there during the week. And we talked to a couple of, again, very large, I, you know, um, 
CROs. And what's interesting is they're only getting into the era of precision medicine now. These companies have you know, probably three or four people sometimes working with them. Um, so they're, all, they're trying to, 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 to build a team to catch up into this space. Um, we already have a team um, and we're already in this space. We're leading this way. So you know, I, I think the team itself, the technology itself, is a, is a very attractive, you know, rather than it's a buy or build strategy for many of these multi-billion dollar companies, uh, they, they just acquire because it makes more sense than trying to recreate a team that we've spent two years building um, and equally the assets that that team has built. So there could be, a, you know, potentially a, a, a much quicker win than a five years. Uh, equally, I think, you know, the, the, the people we're talking to uh, in, in the in silica drug development all around Cambridge, Massachusetts and indeed Cambridge, UK, um, there's some really interesting stuff being done there and we're partnering within digital cancer twins, um, you know, they all see the value of this in terms of hosting and creating those assets that can be dynamically updated and interchanged. So look, I think this big tech, this pharma goes without saying, um, and that could be you know, a very quick win depending on how quick these, these, these big entities wish to you know, augment and enhance their presence in this market. Um, and equally, even without that, I think you become a takeover target for a whole host of big tech who are, who are really in an arms race to get into the healthcare market, be that Verily, Amazon, Apple, you name it. Good stuff. Um, is it possible for pa patients to go directly to a cure to find clinical trials or do they need to be referred? No, no, they can't. I mean, our whole ethos is patient first. Um, we try and partner with patients and hopefully we'll have some news on that, on that front very, very shortly, actually, maybe in the next two weeks that will really excite investors as well. Uh, our whole model is, is if we want to bypass the doctors, we want to work with the doctors, but we work primarily, we're patient first. That's the whole ethos behind our crowdfunding, behind our, our, our web 3.0 permissioned access only. We don't own the data, patients do. Um, we want to empower patients and groups of patients to influence drug development, own the data. And if enough people get involved, you can start influencing what the direction of therapies and direction of, of, of therapeutics. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it, it's all about the patient first. So, Rather than the doctors, we want to work with them. And you know, as, a, as a consultant myself, I, I know the importance of that. But we want to go beyond them because we won't, don't want silos of data. As I said at the start, we want everyone to access. We want to democratize this. So it's not just about me creating a paper with my patients. It's got to be beyond that. We've got to move beyond that thinking where it's all about open access data um, that any researcher can use that's more reliant on their intelligence and their innovation rather than their access to a pool of patients because they work in a tertiary hospital. And so I think that's a, a fundamental transformation in how clinical trials should be accessed and run. Excellent. Um, just a question on uh, what's the gaps, what gaps are they in the management team at the moment? Or what, what do you um, see? You know, that's a good question. I think it's something we're always looking at, you know, the team itself. Um, and as I said, we, we're, we're really proud of the expertise we have, but. Equally, we're now at that stage of commercializing, commercializing hopefully at scale and equally at speed. Um, you know, we're, we're obviously active in the Irish market now, but um, you know, equally we're looking to push into the US very quickly. And with EI's help now, we're, we're, we're exploring those aligned verticals in Australia also, very similar private public market like Ireland, but equally Australia, not only with my own very senior connections in that whole market in Australia after working there for 15 years, but this 50% of the population must have private insurance. Um, it's mandated. So there's a massive appetite and market there for health insurers, community pharmacies to, to offer new services to their, to their basically their, their, their customers. So um, I think, um, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's the commercial piece is probably a commercialization, senior commercialization yeah. executive. Um, I, 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 what's what's great again? I know we've talked about EI a couple of times, but you know we, we've also qualified and won a grant to hire two senior executives. So that's a hundred thousand euro grant on top of everything else, um, which allows us to hire two senior execs. And I think commercialization will be one of the key pieces. Possibly senior blockchain product officer will be a second key hire. Um, at the moment we contract that, but but we're now at the stage when really bringing that in house. So they'd be the two pieces. And again, a nod to Enterprise Ireland and the grants that they help um, to accelerate that, you know, that, that grabbing that senior talent 
and you know what's happening in, in, in Dublin with Meta and Twitter and all the rest really accelerates the ability for startups and scale-ups like ourselves to secure that talent that might have been available you know heretofore. Good. Okay, time's running out. So last question. Uh, why are you so confident on completing a Series A in the first half of next year? I, I think it's built on what we've done. So Series A is all about um, having a product and being post-revenue and having product market fit. So Series A is about scaling and accelerating. And so we've been talking with some of the world's largest VCs, actually. Um, I won't name them now, but I can certainly... And there's, there's three very close VCs who are interested in the Series A and indeed leading this. There, two of them are, are US-based, one's out of Cambridge, Massachusetts, one would be known to every investor on this call, and the other a big European with a digital health fund. Um, so we know what we need to do to secure that. And hence this pre-Series A is, is giving us that, that's, you know, that, that quick money to accelerate the process, create those metrics, finalize the tech stack, release the precision clinical trials, and open the market into the US. So we know what we need to do, and, and we're able to do that with, with the kind of funding we're securing now. Uh, and I think, you know, it, 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 if I may, one of the things that was really exciting for us during the week was you may or may not have seen the, the news with Chris Hemsworth, you know, that, that, that the Hollywood Australian actor about, you know, he did took a, effectively did a digital twin um, and created his digital twin and, and saw that he was at variance putting him at tenfold risk of Alzheimer's disease, again, a neurological disease and one of, a disease that's very close to our heart and something that, that we're really focused on as well. This gave him insights into his future health and allowed him now access and take steps and preventative steps for that. And that to us just validated everything we're doing because it's, and we've even seen that in our, in our, in our numbers now in the last week, um, for the social media campaigns we've launched for the Find a Cure project, you know, we're getting five times the opening that, that is the market um, norm for those. Um, because all of a sudden people see, and you, you have these you know, key celebrities when this happens, all of a sudden people go, oh, I, I can relate to that. I get that. Dad had Alzheimer's. I better check that. Oh, well, I've got a variant for that as well. So it brings it back to a consumer level, to an individual man of the street level, the importance of creating those assets. And once those assets are there, we have the infrastructure to effectively not just monetize those, but empower those with them to, 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 to derive new meanings and hopefully new cures. And I think you're offering uh, investors who put in a, um, an amount to actually get a free uh, digital twin, I think, aren't no, you? No, no, yeah, that's fine. It was worth clarifying that. Anyone who invests 500 euro or more gets a free digital twin worth 200 euro. Uh, so we think that's quite exciting. I mean, that combined with the, 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 the potential EIS tax rebate means that you're almost getting it for free. Yep. Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. And the investment, of course. Uh, <laughs> that's and, probably the big piece, yeah. yeah. Well, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Oren, thank you very much for all of that. That's brilliant. Um, and uh, we've gone on probably a little bit longer than I yeah, expected. No, sorry about that, yeah. I think it was worthwhile uh, teasing out a lot of those questions. We still have got loads left to ask, but um, uh, we'll have to do but those I, manually. I, I, and uh, Happy to jump on, time. whatever. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. But um, listen, thank you very much indeed. So uh, Acura is obviously live on the site at the moment, everybody, um, and you can invest uh, right now if you wish. Um, and it's only going to be open for a number of days uh, from this point onwards. So so uh, I think you'll agree that uh, it's worth a ser serious consideration uh, for an investment. Um, we've already got a number of, uh, of what we've already had a number of one to ones, and we've got a few more left to do as well uh, with Oren uh, of, of certain investors who wanted to um, you know, you know, ask Oren directly face to face. And we were able to do so, some more of those. If you if you'd like to get in contact with me, we can arrange that. Uh, but I think that's it for today. And uh, thank you very much indeed, Oren. Thank you very much indeed, Fergal. And thank you all very much for attending and uh, hope to see you again soon. Thanks very much.